Well, thank you very much uh, for the hearing, and thanks to all of you for being here. Uh, Mr. Reed, I'd like to start with a question for you. Uh, first of all, uh, very, I have a lot of respect for your organization as an app developer myself. Uh, thank you for the good work that you do. You had uh, some really interesting testimony about, uh, about preemption and the need to take all of these disparate sectoral privacy standards and unify them under one uh, under one universal rule at the federal level. Uh, I, but I'd like to ask kind of a follow-up question on preemption, because this is one of the big debates that we're having about the ADD, ADPPA here coming out of this committee, is the degree to which it should preempt state law. So do you believe that we should fully preempt state law uh, in the issue of di digital data privacy, or do you believe that, as some states have requested that we do, that we merely establish a floor and allow the individual states to go above that floor in re their requirements on privacy if they wish to? I think we need fully uh, a full federal pre um, preemptive uh, legislation. I think without it, you cause international problems. As I said earlier, tiny app developers will be in the international trade business. They'll be selling their apps or making them available in 100 countries. So if the privacy laws aren't federally mandated across the board, then we have a problem even on international trade. Secondarily, as you point out, and I said this earlier, there's this idea or conflagration of this idea that it's levels, but sometimes it's just the definitions. So I might do the right thing, but I call it one thing in one state and one thing in another, and that means the compliance costs for a small business go up is I have to create, create separate documents to talk about separate regimes with slightly different definitions. It's not always about levels. Sometimes it's just about what you call it. Yeah, I, I completely agree with you. You know, I think sometimes we forget about the fact that when we allow this patchwork of regulation to exist with 50 different laws in 50 different states, it's very destructive to entrepreneurialism because the people that have the regulatory sophistication to deal with that are the big companies that have uh, uh, offices full of lawyers, and the people that don't have the sophistication to deal with that are two people in a garage that have to pay lawyers by the hour. So uh, I, I'm, I'm completely agree with, with you. I think that we have to be very careful about preemption. I think we need to decide what areas we're legislating in with our privacy bill, uh, totally preempt within those areas and then carve out the other areas to make it clear where states can act independently and where they can't. Uh, and then, uh, you know, just following up to that, I, I was uh, in the California state legislature, I was one of the leads in drafting the California Consumer Privacy Act. And uh, I, I think it's very important that we avoid some of the mistakes that were made with CCPA. Uh, we got a lot of things right. We were under time pressure without going in, in, into detail to get that passed, but uh, there were some kind of uh, uh, unexpected consequences that arose after that. Uh, one of the main ones was that, uh, much to our surprise, so we thought this was going to be an iterative process, and once we passed it, we knew we were going to th have things that were missed as it was implemented, and we thought we were going to come along in subsequent years and fix it. You know, we would have a fix-up bill the year after another fix-up bill the year after that. And what we had not anticipated is that when you create, even unintentionally, a regulatory landscape with winners and losers, all of the winners will then get together and try and prevent you from changing the rule the subsequent year, even if the rule was, was arbitrary, unintentional, or unfair. And that's just a fact of political life. Uh, and uh, I had underestimated how, how much that came to play. So that's why it's so important that you're here, because I think stakeholder engagement is how you guard against that. Uh, and so I think we need to be very careful and deliberate about that. Uh, another thing that I think we need to be very careful about is that we are very specific in our choice of language in the bill. Uh, when you allow ambiguity to creep into what should be technical terms, particularly when it comes to things like data minimization, you need to be very careful that you are specific about what you mean when you say the data that you collect has to be necessary or if you say that it has to be related to the core business of your company, you better define what that means. Uh, if you use a technical term, you better very carefully define it because otherwise you'll find yourself in the situation that we were in uh, of having to watch a room full of lawyers argue in front of a judge about what the intent of the author was. Uh, and that's something that, that you know, when we abdicate our responsibility as legislators to the judicial branch, it, it serves no purpose. So I, I'm hoping that we can avoid some of that uh, 
some of those complications this time around. And again, it's going to be through the engagement of stakeholders like the groups that you represent that uh, that we're able to get that done. So thank you very much for uh, your testimony today, and we're looking forward to continuing to work with you to make sure we get this right. So I, I will yield uh, five minutes.